um, that the committee selected and uh, how you feel about the chances with them in Tokyo. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited. It's finally here. Uh, I know the, the committee um, has done a tremendous job at, at getting it to, to 12, no matter how difficult that was. And obviously I, I do feel for uh, the players who were with us for the past three or four years that, that didn't make the roster and is not anything against who they are and the talent that they are. Um, it's just hard to get down to 12. Every, every four years we, we do this and it's, it gets more difficult. Um, but I'm super happy for the, for the roster that um, we have. I do think it's a great mix of very experienced players to first time Olympians. And you need a, you need a pretty good mix, um, especially if you want to take care of um, winning a gold medal today and also just jump starting what the future looks like. Um, so, um, you know, I, I do think it's enough on the roster to win a gold medal. We just have to um, utilize our, our training camp, a final training camp before we go over to uh, Tokyo. Thank you, John. We'll start off with questions today from Doug Feinberg from the AP. Hey, Dawn, good to see you. Congrats on your win the other day down in uh, Puerto Rico, the America Cup team. Thanks, Doug. You mentioned, I mean, there is that mix. And obviously, Sue and Dee have been there forever, so to speak, with the Olympics and yourself as well. How, these newcomers you have, the, the, the first timers led by Asia, what is the biggest thing you need out of them to get you guys where you want to be? Uh, you know, so, some of these newcomers have played um, in World Cups. Um, some of them have um, been around our, you know, our USA basketball um, culture over the past three or four years. Um, we just want them to do what they've done. And that is um, when your number's called is to perform. Um, these are highly competitive, motivated women who um, they just want to win. And what that looks like sometimes is a little different um, because all of them are their team's top scorers, um, top producers. And when you come into a setting like USA Basketball, I mean, you, you, you tend to, you know, fall back on that. Um, but you also tend to do as the others are doing it. And that is whatever it takes for us to win. Um, people have to step up and do or step down and do because you, you could play a, um, a much different role than you play on your on your on your WNBA team. Thank you, Don. We'll go next to David Cloninger. Hey, Don. Good to see you again. Um, just hey. a couple of questions. One, when and where does training camp start? And two, you've spoken often about the pressure of, of having to win a gold medal for Team USA. How much do you embrace that pressure and present it to the team? Um, I mean, it's, training camp is uh, mid-July in, in Vegas. And, um, I mean, anytime that you represent um, USA Basketball, you got the biggest target on your – on your back, on your chest. Um, and everybody seems to play their best basketball. Um, I, I think what's, what's happened over the, the time that I've been um, the head coach of, of USA basketball teams are um, opportunities to familiarize myself with the pressures. You know, we, we won a gold medal two days ago in Puerto Rico. These are all great experiences for me to be in uh, to help you know, ultimately for what we want to do in, in Tokyo next month. Um, so, I mean, the pressure is what it is. I think what we must do is rely on the trust the players and rely on them to, to, to do what they've done um, all Olympic season long. They've, they've done it for years and um, you have to trust that the players are able to execute. Thank you. And uh, next we'll go to Joe Gorshaw with WIS TV. Hi, Don. Joe Gorshaw, WIS TV. Hope you're doing well this morning and congratulations on the win over the weekend. I'm curious, you have all this Olympic experience and you have these newcomers coming with you. They have experience playing on world stages and big events, but the Olympics has to be different. How would you describe the Olympic venue and how to handle that experience while you're competing and also trying to enjoy this perhaps once in a lifetime memory for some of your players? You know, this, this Olympic Games is going to be much different than any other. 
um, because you're you're not going to be able to do a whole lot of what you've been able to do in the past besides watch it on on, on television. Um, I think um, a, a first timer, um, you're going to be excited. You're going to just probably be happy to be there. Um, you're going to rely a lot on the the experienced players to get us over the hump. Um, but then you'll you'll get your opportunity to step up and contribute. That is what younger players have to be ready to do. Um, it isn't, you know, I, I can remember Sue when Diana's first Olympic Games back in 2004, um, they had the time of their lives. Like they had a great time. Like they party, they stayed up all night. They, they did it all because they relied on us to, to, to get us where we needed to go. Um, but there are also some lessons in that, you know, we, we did have to talk to them about, hey, we're heading into the medal rounds and these are the most difficult ones. Um, once you get to the quarters, it's pretty, you know, pressure packed. Um, so we, we had to talk to them about just making sure that they're, they're staying focused. They can still have fun and enjoy the experience, but um, we may need them. And if we need them, they have to be ready. And that's pretty much the same thing. I, I think the younger players on this particular team are going to have to play though right away. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to helping them get through being a first timer because it's, it's a different experience, but it's a, it's a good one, but you don't want to miss the boat when your number's called. Thank you. Next we have Jeff Metcalf from Phoenix. Don, you told me that you weren't too worried about Tarazi's injury, that you thought she'd be ready, and it appears she's going to be able to play this week. Um, so just talk a little bit about what she brings to the table, and then also um, the other two Mercury players, if you can. Um, I mean, uh, these, these, always, these, are, these are always going to be able to, you know, uh, beat the odds when it comes to being injured. Um, I think the, the biggest separation for D and, and probably the rest of uh, the women's basketball world or, or men's basketball or ba just the basketball world is um, she's mentally tougher than probably any any player that I've been around. Um, and, I, and I also expressed to you, she's going to be ready because she's going to tell her body to be ready. Sometimes your body tells you um, that it, want, it wants to rest and it probably told her it wants to rest in the form of an injury, but I think it just saved her for being ready for the Olympic games. I think you know, she wants to be a five-time Olympian and a five-time gold medalist. And that's, that's what happens when, uh, when you're, you're one with your, with your body and your mind and your soul and your spirit. So D is all of that. So didn't question whether or not she would be ready to go. Um, who else we got on the, the thing is Skyler, um, and BG, um, you know, BG is a staple for us. Um, we, we wouldn't leave the country without BG. Her presence out there on the floor on both sides of the ball is needed. Um, and then Skyler, super happy for Skyler. Skyler's been in our, you know, in the pool for, um, this is her second Olympic Games that she's been in the pool and she finally, um, she finally made it. I think through her per, uh, perseverance, her play, her steadiness, her ability to continue to come to training camps, when it, you know, it's not popular to, you know, stop what you're doing, come and train with us for a week or three or four days here or there. Um, but she's done that over the past probably seven to eight years. Um, so I'm, I'm happy for her, really happy for, for Skylar because this is something that she really, really wanted to do. Thank you. Uh, now we've got um, Mitch Brown with WCH Fox. Hey Don, uh, congratulations on uh, everything with the uh, over the past weekend. Um, one of the first timers that you've been around is Asia for you know more than the other first timers. I'm curious if this is a conversation throughout the years, her younger years that you guys had about making this team and to see it manifest for her finally. Uh, what is that moment like for you as someone that's coached her throughout the year? Um, I mean, it's it's tremendous. You know, we 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 had talked about. Um, this is one of the things we talked about, you know, I think she's, she's been able to check off <laughs> everything, every, every list that she compiled, um, since I've known her, um, and this being one of them, 
Um, I'm, I'm not surprised. I think Asia has the, the things that she's done um, after leaving the University of South Carolina um, have been quite amazing. Like she was, she was, she was born and bred to do what she's doing. Um, and, you know, she'll play an integral role in, in, in our success in, in Tokyo, um, like, just like she's been doing for the, you know, Las Vegas Aces, just like she did for University of South Carolina, just like she'll continue to do for, you know, for the, the world of women's basketball. Thank you, Don. Uh, Michelle Vopel, you're up next. Um, yeah, Don, I was wondering uh, two things, if you could maybe talk specifically about the, the youngest players on, on the team, like Adkins and Collier, and, and what it means, um, you think, to them. Uh, you talked about Skylar being a first-time Olympian is a little older, but what it means to the younger players. And then, you know, I know the, the coach doesn't pick the team, but um, in terms of Neka Gumke, was her injury, and as far as you know, the biggest factor um, of, of her not being on this team? Okay. Um, Ariel and Nafisa, um, I, I've been around them a, a, a great deal through these training camps, and uh, I've actually coached uh, Nafisa in U18, U19. Um, so I'm, I'm very familiar with her, and, and, and obviously I, I feel like both of them carve out a space in which uh, we need younger legs, um, great basketball decision makers on both sides of the ball, um, I think they, they just separated themselves, um, from the rest of the younger group, um, by, by, by doing the little things by, you know, and it's hard when you're, you're that young, you, you have a tendency to, to let those younger, I'm sure those older ex experienced players do their thing and you and you, you tend to just kind of fall back, but they, they fell back, but they also made an impact. Um, quietly, you know, and, and they're the, the perfect younger player to be on a team like this because they're just going to do what they're asked to do and do it at a really high level. Um, so I'm happy, super happy for them. And then, you know, the NECA thing, it, it breaks it really breaks my heart that NECA is not on this team and it has everything to do with having to make a decision um, today. I mean, if we had to make a decision a month from now, and I'm sure she would be healthy but it, it does break my heart because I know um, this is one of the things that she want she wanted to do, and she she came to every training camp. She came to, you know, she's a, been a great um, voice in our in our training camp, in our practices, and we're, we're definitely going to miss Neka. Rick Henry, you're up next. Hey Don, congratulations on putting together this roster and your most uh, recent gold medal. Could you speak? Uh, a little more specifically about Asia and what makes her such a great asset for this team, both with her individual um, skill level, uh, her familiarity with you and her um, previous international experience. Um, I, 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 Asia is, um, has, I mean, what she's been able to do um, both on and off the court um, tells us all that she's prepared for, for this moment because Playing in the Olympic Games is not just about playing. It's about it's about being mature. Um, it's about being able to play with with, with other great players. Um, it's about also just uh, performing at a at a high level as well. Um, so every 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 step of of Asia's career, she utilized in a way in which helped her for a moment like this. And I couldn't be more proud. Of, of her and who she is and what she represents for, for all of us, the University of South Carolina, the city of Columbia or Hopkins, um, um, and, and her parents. Her parents have raised her to be um, just who she is and all the things that come with that. And fortunately for, for her and us, um, it is being an Olympian. Let's, let's, let's hope she can help us, you know, add gold medalist to, to her title. And we have a follow-up from David Cloninger. Hey, Donna, this popped last week while you're in Puerto Rico about the Trailblazers having interest in you. Have you interviewed with them or will you interview with them about their head coach? Um, I, I've talked to the Portland Trailblazers um, and 
that's that's the extent of it. I've talked to them. Yes. Next, uh, Christos, and I apologize, I'm going to butcher your last name, so I'm not going to say it, but from Greece. Hello, coach. How are you? My name is Christos Saltas from Greece. I have two, uh, two questions for you. The first one is you have uh, players who combined the uh, 15 gold medals in Olympic Games and 19 World Cup uh, gold medals. What kind of challenge to keep motivate those uh, players and uh, what type of challenge for you is this? And what kind of luxury for you is to have all those players under your uh, direction? Um, the challenge of having the, the players that, that have the 15 gold medals and the 19 World Cups. Um, I mean, it, 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 it really isn't a challenge because they, they all sacrifice. They just want to win. Um, so there really, really isn't a challenge. The challenge is uh, for all of us to as quickly as possible once we have any type of training camp is continue that commitment to each other and, and continue the commitment to the task at hand. Everybody at the end of the day on our, you know, that wears the red, white, and blue, um, they want to win a gold medal. And nothing gets in the way of that. Nothing selfish gets in the way of us accomplishing that goal. So the challenge is really not a challenge. It's just to stay the course of, of what we've been doing because that's what's worked. And uh, my second question to you is, what what do you expect in uh, in Tokyo? What what and what result will make you satisfied? Not only the gold medal, but what are the what other result will make you satisfied as a coach? You said besides the gold medal. Yes. Well, since it's a short period of time, I, I mean the gold medal is ultimately what we want, and and what comes with that is a great experience, um, meaning. Um, for as much as we, we can, we got to create, we got to create that experience, um, off the floor because we're going to be bubbled up. You're not going to be able to do anything. It's going to be much like, you know, the NCAA tournament, um, uh, much like the bubble, the WNBA bubble, um, last summer. Um, so we'll, we'll find a way it, it, it won't be the extent of the, the wobble. It'll just be the extent of like the NCAA tournament where, um, you know, we, we, we don't get to go anywhere besides um, practices. And we'll, you know, once we do that, we'll have a, you know, an appreciation for practice because it leads to us getting some, some fresh air and not being stuck in a hotel. Next, we have Brad Miller from uh, University of South Carolina. Hey, Coach. Good to see you again. Hey, um, just a couple of quick things. One, you've represented the U.S. obviously at so many different levels as a player and a coach. And what does it mean to you? Is it still a thrill to have this opportunity uh, to wear the USA uh, across your chest in such a meaningful way? And the second thing is, what's the biggest difference for you in coaching 18, 19, 20 year olds and this older group of you know, all stars? How are you different as a coach? Um, um, I mean, it, it, this never gets old to, to represent your country. Um, and also, I'm a, I'm a purist when it comes to to basketball. I, I like basketball played a certain type of way. I like it approached a certain type of way. Um, and it, it, the purity of it is incredible. Like there, there isn't any, you know, um, selfish acts is everybody really. And it's a, a, a weird dynamic, whether you're coaching 18 to 22 year olds, or if you're coaching, um, just pros, um, they all seem to just fall in line when it comes to um, representing your country and, and winning gold medals. Um, but the younger players, you, you probably have to uh, teach a lot more and explain things a lot more. Whereas the older players, they, they, they already are visualizing the options that you can get out of uh, um, certain plays offensively. They already have a, a connection defensively because they, they're some of the best communicators that you ever want to meet. Like it out there on the floor, you stick out like a sore thumb if you don't communicate. Um, but it just instantly happens because they're, they're searching for work. They, they're searching for ways to just create an edge every single possession on, on both sides of the ball. And it's, you know, younger players, um, 
you know, your, your coaches are telling them every single option out there on the floor and just kind of, you know, broaden their peripheral mm -hmm. when they're out there on the floor. So it's, it's, it's a cool dynamic to just kind of sit back and, and analyze. Thank you, Don. We have two more questions, two final questions. The first will go with uh, Fago Franklin with New Stitch Media and then circle back for another follow-up from David. Good morning, coach. Good morning. You talk about your faith a lot. How has it, how has your faith molded you into a better coach, leader, and person in everyday life? And um, tell me your thoughts about Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday now. Um, you know, my, my, my faith, I, obviously I've, I've, I've been blessed to to do a lot of things, a, a lot of things that are unimaginable when I was, you know, when I was a, a little girl growing up in the projects in North Philly. Um, but but I've often often said that um, my my path is divinely ordered. So what, what, whatever that is, because I, you know, the only there were only two things that I really wanted to do was win a national championship and and, and win a gold medal and be an Olympian. And I've been able to accomplish those things and, you know, 10 times more. Um, but I just kind of just allow things to just happen. Things happen to me in my career that that just happen. They, I don't I don't plan for them to happen. They just they they come in my path and, you know, I pray about which direction I need to go. And um, for the most part, I. I you know, I've been led to, to where I am today. Um, and then um, Juneteenth becoming a national holiday in most, in most states. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a, it's a great thing um, to, to be able to celebrate in that way. Cause I know a lot of people have fought to make it a, uh, a, a national holiday and um, hopefully the fight will continue where all states recognize it and observe it as a holiday. David, did you still have a, uh, another follow-up? Yeah, David's no. got another follow-up. You know, David, <laughs> about Portland, I'm sure you wanted to ask a little bit. Well, then, if, if you'd like to discuss it, I mean, do they offer you the gig at all? <laughs> no, they did not. Okay. They did not. Um, I was just going to also ask you about um, Alicia made the Olympic three, three by three team. And we y'all get to interact over there in Tokyo? Will, will the two teams kind of practice together, hang out together? Will you be able to see her while in the Olympics? I think we're staying in the same um, hotel. Um, so yes, I'll, I'll, I'll see her. Uh, we won't be able to go, you know, to any of her games. Um, I, I don't, they start a little bit sooner than we do. Um, and they'll probably be done by the time we uh, play one or two games. Um, and if I just can jump in, we have not named our three on three team yet. So nothing is official. Um, uh -huh. And I know I said David was the last one, but we have one final one. Don, if you would um, please uh, allow Pepper Pursley to ask the final question for the day. Pepper. Hey coach, I just got back from a basketball workout. So I'm sorry if somebody already asked this, but um, what does it mean to you to be a black woman in this position? Look at you, Pepper. Um, I mean, it, it, it's super cool, obviously. Um, and you know, we nowadays we're we're hearing a lot of first, um, whether it's two black coaches in the um, NCAA Final Four, two black coaches competing in the SEC uh, championship, to now just a black coach being the the head coach of an Olympic team. Um, I think it's you know, and I I know some people are just like, oh, if you can coach, you can coach, you can. That's that's true, that's true. But when it's a first, when it's history making, I think it's, it's something to be proud of. And it's also, um, it's all, it also allows other doors to be open and opportunities for other black coaches to, to, to hold these positions. So um, there's a lot of pressure to, to win gold um, because of it. Um, and I, I look forward to that challenge as always. But great question, Pepper, as always, hope, hope you, Hope all of your shots hit nothing but the bottom of the net. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.